Hi, hi, and welcome to our first Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile Beta webinar. So my name is Kate, and I'm Product Marketing Manager for Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. So um, in case you missed it, uh, Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile went beta last week, and we are all like absolutely excited about it. I think that the best way to start learning Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile is to get some hands-on experience with it. So that's why we're conducting a series of webinars uh, that will help you to uh, get this experience and uh, they will covering the basics of Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile and demonstrating some of the most popular use cases. Um, let me first uh, briefly list the, the topics uh, that we are going to cover through next weeks. So first one today, uh, getting started with Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. Next, making your Android application work on iOS. Next one, dependency injection in Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile projects. And the last one for this series, of course, we are planning to do more webinars, uh, sharing data layer between Android and iOS. Uh, you can find the full schedule with the dates, times, and by way, uh, registration links for webinars. Uh, if you register for them, you will um, get the reminders. It's quite useful. Uh, in our blog post, uh, you can find uh, the link to it uh, in the description uh, for this video. And for today, our first amazing speaker is Pamela Hill, developer advocate for Kotlin. Hi, Pam. How are you? Hello, good and you, Kate? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, of course. So, like all exciting news are happening in our mobile development community. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. So Pam, could you please like briefly discuss what we are going to do today? So today's topics is very exciting. We're going to um, just learn the basics about Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. We're going to create an app, enhance it a little bit and have a lot of fun. And answer Sounds some of your burning questions, yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Sounds awesome. But uh, before jumping in, uh, I would suggest to learn a little bit more about our audience. Folks, I'm reading all your comments in chat. Thanks for your activity, for your greetings. Uh, so uh, my first question will be, like, well, what's your, your development background? For which platform uh, are you developing most of the time. Please, uh, we'll uh, just in a second, we will run a survey in YouTube. And you can also, of course, uh, type uh, more comprehensive comments uh, in chat. Okay, let, let me read uh, your comments. iOS and Android, good. Android native de development. Good to see that uh, we have viewers like worldwide. <laughs> so currently we have 68% uh, of uh, 70 right now. Uh, it's uh, changing, but, but, the trend, uh, <laughs> but the trend is obvious. Android developers and 4% uh, of iOS, de iOS developers here 16% cross-platform mobile development and 11% uh, other. Uh, I'm curious, <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what are your like, favorite technologies? Service-side Kotlin, oh, Oliver, <laughs> great, great choice, by the way, great choice. Both iOS and Android, iOS and Android Platter, KMP, great, great. Well, uh, uh, it, it was uh, like, uh, it's, it's not a surprise for me, but uh, I'm, again, uh, I'm glad to see 6% of iOS developers here. Like, <laughs> and uh, I hope this number will increase in future. And uh, just a small disclaimer for, uh, for iOS folks, uh, um, because Kotlin multi development for, with Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile implies using some tools which are usually not so common for iOS developers, let's say like this, like Android Studio or Gradle and something like that. Uh, today webinar, uh, some things might, uh, might be like uh, unfamiliar for you, but please uh, don't be afraid. We will share all the links uh, later and like in chat and in the description. So you can follow all the steps which we are going to cover today. 
like uh, uh, in your speed and also like uh, spend some time to to learn the, the new tools for you but anyway i believe uh, today webinar will be useful for all of you even for folks who are not yet familiar with this tooling because uh, our goal to um, to give you like a, a general wide uh, picture, a general description of uh, what you can do with uh, Kotlin Multiplot for mobile, and of course how to start with this. But Pam will <laughs> tell uh, a lot about it. And the second and the last question uh, from my side. So, um, if uh, for all of our viewers, uh, could you please tell me, uh, have you already tried Kotlin Multiplot for mobile, and if so, like? Uh, uh, how deep <laughs> did you go? Um, give us a second. We will run the second survey for you. Okay, let's see the results. One second, we are running the second survey. Uh, Enike uh, saying that uh, nope, uh, I think uh, it relates to his experience with Kotlin uh, Motor Platform Mobile. I feel the setup is hard. I believe, uh, first, I believe today webinar and PEM will help us <laughs> to, to, uh, to go through it. And also, of course, we are planning uh, a lot of the improvements, not only in terms of uh, like the core of Kotlin Motor Platform Mobile, but also around some tooling, which uh, might be very helpful for you uh, during your setup. Mm, with a spoiler, um, I, I won't, I, I won't uh, talk anymore. Okay, let's see the results. Okay, uh, more than a half of our viewers uh, haven't tried Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile yet. Uh, good to know, good to know that you are interested in it and that you came to our webinar. So like you're our target audience. And by the way, we have also 30% uh, of those who've already played with it in their pet projects and 18% of those who are actively using it uh, in their work projects and I think even in production. So, uh, folks, for experienced part of our audience, also my suggestion is, uh, of course, uh, the topics we are going to cover, they might be quite common for you, but uh, I believe that uh, you also can share your experience uh, with us and don't hesitate and answer the questions from less experienced audience so we can like share <laughs> our experience. This will help us a lot because like, I believe we will get a lot of questions. Uh, I hope we will be able to answer them all. But uh, anyway, your help and your experience is really appreciated. So like, don't hesitate, share both all the questions and answers in chat. OK, so I think that's enough of introduction and warm, warming up. And uh, like Pam, the, the microphone is yours. Thank you, Kate. Hi, folks. Welcome to our webinar, Getting Started with Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. My name, as Kate introduced me, is Pamela Hill, and welcome to the webinar today. I am a developer advocate at JetBrains. So first off, what is Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile? Maybe this is your first time hearing the term, and maybe just a, I'd like to share just a quick little uh, the definition of what it is. It's really a technology that helps us share code once and use it on Android and iOS. But what are the benefits of this technology? What is the benefits of, of using Kotlin multi-platform mobile? Firstly, it has to do with flexibility to choose what is shared and what is not shared. For example, if you want to share a, a very important, maybe very complex algorithm and then code the, the rest natively to your heart's content, you can. But that sharing actually helps you go faster and it also ensures consistency amongst your platforms. So what will we learn today? Well, the goal is really just to learn the basics of Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile and of course to have fun. So we're going to create a multi-platform mobile project. We're going to understand the project structure then we're going to share code between Android and iOS and learn about the expect actual mechanism. 
And of course, we need to understand what, of, what kind of code we can use where. In the process, we're going to create three versions of an Android and iOS app. Let's have a look at them. So this is our first application, a device information application. So on the left-hand side is Android, on the right-hand side is iOS. So our, uh, what we're going to do is like a little bit of a hello world. And on the left-hand side, it's our Android device is displaying hello Android 33. 33 is the SDK version of the uh, emulator that I ran this on. On the right-hand side, we have Hello iOS 15.5, which is uh, the 15.5 is the system version of the iOS emulator that I ran this on. Then we're going to do something in standard Kotlin, and we're going to reverse it. Uh, we're going to re reverse the platform name. So on Android, it will read, guess what it is, 33. And did you know that Android backwards, Kate, is your DNA? And on iOS, it will read, guess what it is, 5.51 soy. <laughs> you learn something new every day. <laughs> right. And our third version of the application is the days until the new year 2023. Now, when I created this application, um, which was a few days ago, there were only 75 days left until new year. So on Android, it would reflect that on, on Android and the same on iOS. But I hope that you are fulfilling your New Year's resolutions for 2022 because I read on Twitter today that the year progress indicator is on 80%. So there's not much time left to, to lose weight, travel more, <laughs> and do all those things, guys. Yeah. So you can follow along with us. We will be using the onboarding journey that you can find on our website. You can follow this link. And we'll be doing the first three steps of the onboarding journey. There are five steps. The fifth step is kind of um, not really a step. And the fourth step I'll explain now. But step number one is setting up the environment. Step number two is creating that first app you, uh, that works both on Android and iOS. And the third step is adding dependencies to our project. The fourth step, which we're not going to do, but we're going to give to you as homework. Aren't you excited? <laughs> we're going to, uh, has to do with um, data and networking. So um, it's, it's a little complicated and we don't want to information overload you. And we love giving you homework to do. So you are welcome to do, follow that step in your own time and have a look at um at that step. So you can, Kate will share, be sharing that link um, in the chat so that you can follow it and save it for a little bit later. Right. So first up, we're going to set up our environment. For the full developer experience, you need a Mac with Mac OS. Now, this is so that you can run, uh, you can write iOS specific code and also create an iOS emulator that you can run um, the applications that you write on. But if you're on Windows or Linux, or Linux, um, don't despair quite yet. So you can write the shared code and Android code on, on your normal machine, but you're going to have to phone a friend in order to do the iOS parts for you so that you can run it on iOS and um, write the shared iOS code as well in Xcode. Now, let's first have a look at the Android and multi-platform part of the ecosystem. You need Android Studio, which is free to download. Then in Android Studio, you will need the Kotlin plugin and the Kotlin multi-platform mobile plugin. Now, what is this multi-platform mobile plugin? It basically gives you a, a series of wizards that will help you set up libraries and apps for Kotlin multi-platform. It also gives you the ability to run both Android and iOS apps from the IDE, from Android Studio, which is pretty cool. Then you also need Gradle. Gradle is a build system in the Android ecosystem, and you'll also need the JDK or Java Development Kit. Now, you can use Android Studio's bundle JDK, um, but I personally feel that I would rather um, use my own JDK. Then on 
the iris side maybe you're unfamiliar with what's happening on iris so xcode is an ide for writing iris applications and in there you write swift and objective c and you can also create an iris emulator so you don't actually need an iphone to write and run um, iris code and 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 you don't need an iphone to actually work, work with cotton multi-platform mobile it also has a little concept called CocoaPods. Now, CocoaPods is an application dependency manager, and it's not really necessary for this webinar to understand CocoaPods. Um, we, we will maybe explain it in uh, additional source material that we will add, but for now, CocoaPods is not something that we're going to be using in this webinar. We're going to be using something much, much simpler. Um, and simple is always good, right? Of course, then there's a little useful tool called KDoctor. Now, KDoctor helps us verify that our whole ecosystem, our, our whole environment is set up correctly. And I'd like to show you exactly what KDoctor does. It allows you to fix failures, check warnings, and ensure finally that you have a success message. But remember, because we're not using CocoaPods, you can ignore the K-Doctor warnings about CocoaPods. But I'm going to show you on my terminal what happens if I run K-Doctor on my environment. So now all the pressure is on me to, to type correctly. And here we go. OK, so this is what I get when I run K-Doctor. It will verify that I'm running on a Mac OS, this section that my Java is set up correctly and that my Java home is set up correctly. It will verify that I have Android Studio installed and the right versions of the plugins are installed as well. It will verify that I have Xcode installed and that I've accepted the terms and conditions of Xcode. And finally, some CocoaPod related stuff. But the most important message that I want to give to you today is your system is ready for Kotlin multi-platform mobile development. Very exciting. Okay, wait. Let me get back to my, oopsie. Okay, so KDoctor might identify some issues um, and it will give you some descriptions and potential solutions. But if you get stuck further, you can follow this link that I'm gonna click on now and it will help you look at more uh, issues and solutions. So here we are in looking at the section for uh, on Kotlin Lang, looking at the possible issues and solutions section. And it will give you five sections of Android Studio, Java and JDK, Xcode, Kotlin plugins, and command line uh, issues and solutions. For example, if you had some Xcode issues, then here is a few answers for you. Pam, when you first uh, tried to set up uh, your first Kotlin multi-platform mobile project, what was uh, for you the most challenging thing among all this stuff? So, so it was definitely the CocoaPod section um, because I was running an M1. And um, at that stage, we didn't really have accurate documentation about how to set up CocoaPods um, using you, when you're on the M1 environment. But I believe that we've, in that in the meantime, augmented our documentation to include some um, M1 related documentation. So that was the hardest part for me, but it was also understanding Xcode and how things run on Xcode. So that was, that was also a little bit difficult for me. Okay. Um, are there any questions? If they are, please drop your questions in the comment section and Kate will, will uh, filter and have a look for us so that we can answer a few for them. Yeah, so please let me start with the one you already covered, but uh, based on my experience, this is like the one of the most popular questions. And I think like for this getting started webinar, uh, like it's, it's, it's good to repeat <laughs> some, some things. So uh, question from Carlos. And by the way, I saw how uh, other folks uh, are answering the questions and folks, you rock, thank you. And please continue to do this. And we will read some like most popular questions out of loud. So is it possible to create an iOS app without uh, uh, the need to have a Mac machine, just using a window machine? And uh, if yes, does, any, does JetBrains provide some kind of emulator? 
So unfortunately, Carlos, um, there's no way to write an iOS app without having a MacBook or a, a Mac machine. But as I said, you can write the Android and shared code on your Windows machine and then just make a friend with a with an Apple developer and um, or an iOS developer and write write some code together. You're gonna have to share the profits of your your fantastic app with them, but it will be okay because then they can help you with your iOS parts. I totally agree. Uh, the next question it's uh, mostly about the organization for uh, of our webinar, but it's very important. So Pam. Uh, does this video sample code uh, will be uploaded in a Git repo? Will so this is a very for us? <laughs> yeah, this is a very good question. So um, I believe that I've already up accidentally uploaded it to my GitHub repo, but I'll probably um, I, I, I will um, keep ask Kate to keep me accountable, and I will upload this this um, to to the proper Kotlin repo. Okay, great, thanks. And also uh, regarding our plans uh, on the webinars, uh, that's a good one. Can we have webinar about creating Cotton Motor Platform Mobile Library? This topic is hot and there is uh, not a lot of resources uh, about it. Uh, by the way, I, I wrote a series of articles a uh, year or two years ago, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh, maybe I need to update them, but mostly I think they're still relevant. Pam, did you read them? <laughs> I haven't read them because you never shared them with That's me. That's a pity. How rude. How please, rude. Check my dev to, please check my dev to yes. <laughs> yes, please. That. That's your homework. That's your homework. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, uh, I, folks, I see a lot of questions, uh, but most of them, they relate uh, to uh, the next topics. So I definitely will read them. But I think right now we can uh, go next uh, and start creating our first Kotlin Motor Platform Mobile application. Right. So, oh, oh, by the way, by the way, Pam, uh, so, sorry, sorry, I just read mm -hmm. about, we mentioned K-Doctor. Uh, is K-Doctor available on Windows? No. It's a Mac OS tool. But again, don't don't uh, forget about the option to ask your Mac OS friend <laughs> to help you. Yes, yes. and profit share. <laughs> yeah. So I want to just quickly um, take a look at how to. Um, so we've looked at how to what the ecosystem looks like, and we've verified our environment and we've like solved any issues, but now it's time to go on to the next section, which is creating your first cross-platform app. So um, let's start with opening up Android Studio here. And um, we go to new project. Now, then we select phone and tablet, and then we scroll all the way to the bottom. Oh, there we go, there we go. And it says Kotlin multi-platform app. Right, we select that, and then we give our new application that's going to sell like hotcakes. Um, getting started, I'm sure everyone's really excited and just ready to download. Getting started from from the Play Store and the App Store. Um, then the package name, the save location, and the minimum SDK that's supported on Android. So this is actually really important because this is supported by 98% um, of all devices on um, uh, for Android. And so that's a good that's a good uh, API level to have. So we're going to click on next. Then you can keep the rest of the you can keep the application for Android and iOS the same. And also the shared module name can be remain the same, but this is really, really important. Have I got, a, have I got your attention, Kate? Are you, are you with me? We yes, have to yes. change this iOS framework distribution to regular framework. Now this is really important because it's a really simple way of distributing code from, from um, our shared code to Xcode. It's much simpler than CocoaPods and you're going to thank me for it later. So then when we've finished with our, all our setup, we click on finish. So all this uh, setup and uh, um, requires um, quite a lot of time 
to download all the dependencies and set up the components and so on. So I'm not going to sit here and, and wait for dependencies to download. So of course, um, it, it, it makes me think of those old cooking shows where they always like they, they've just made the, the batter and then they're like, but of course I've just prepared this beautiful cake. So I'm going to prepare, show you my beautiful cake that I have here. And it's called Getting Started One. So let's open it up here. Okay. So Getting Started One is going to give you exactly the same results. It is exactly the same in terms of... Um, what the, 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 the wizard will give you um, by default when you click on finish. It's, it's completely a clean project. But, um, so I wanted to show you just here, you see Kate here, the, this default view is Android, but it's not really, really the best view to see the project structure. So I'm going to change it to project. And a lot of stuff will open here. I'm just going to close a few things here. And Thanks I'm going to you don't need to create uh, like a lot of projects every day. Uh, this, uh, uh, only if you're a developer advocate, then I know like <laughs> this is <laughs> for developer advocate. But you don't, yeah, but you, don't, but you don't need to do it like uh, 100 times a day. Yeah, but, but that's important. Well, by the way, like it's so simple, but uh, for folks who are just getting started, I read a lot of complaints, like they can't find the needed source yet or something, but the, the, the solution is very simple just to, it's just to switch change to the project. Yeah. yeah. All right. So each Kotlin multi-platform mobile project has has three modules that are really important. So I'm going to highlight them for you now. It's Android app, iOS app, and Shared. Now, Shared is our Kotlin module where we, con and that contains the logic common between Android and iOS. It's the, it's the code that we share between the platforms. Um, it uses Gradle as a build system, and it is built into a library for Android and a um, regular framework for iOS. Android app is also a Kotlin module. And this module um, is built into an Android application, which we can actually run on an emulator or a real device. And uh, it uses Gradle as the build system as well, but it depends on and uses this shared module that I uh, just highlighted now um, as a regular Android library. iOS app is an Xcode project that you can actually um, open up an X squared, I'll show you shortly how, and it builds into an iOS application. It also depends on and uses the shared module, but it does so as a regular framework. Not And remember that we're not, you can, you can depend on it as a Cocoa Pot, well, using Cocoa Pots, but we're not going to do that in this webinar. We're gonna keep it simple today. So the shared module also consists of three source sets. Now, what is a source set? A source set is a Gradle concept. So iOS folks, please don't get scared. We Please stay with us. We're going to explain it now. So it's a Gradle concept of just a bunch of files that have the, their own dependencies. So in Kotlin multi-platform, we can actually target a specific platform per source set. For example, you can see here, I've got Android main, common main, and iOS main. So Android main will target Android, and iOS main will target iOS. So I want to show you a little diagram that I made for us to explain things a little bit better. Let me just get to it. There we go. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, so I'd like to explain what kind of code you will write in each part of the project and what kind of dependencies you can use where with the help of this beautiful diagram. I think it's beautiful. Um, so in Android app, you write Kotlin JVM, the, the Android app module on the right-hand side, that big green one, you can write Kotlin JVM. Uh, and you can use regular Android dependencies. Name your dependency, you can use it there. 
On the right hand side, we've got iOS app, the iOS app module. There you write Swift and Objective C. And you can use any iOS um, dependency that you normally use in your iOS app, you can use there. Then we have this big block in the middle, that big gray block called shared module. And that is that is consisting of three source sets, Android main, common main, and iOS main. Now in Android main, we write Kotlin JVM and we can use any Android dependencies. In iOS main, we write Kotlin native, which I'll explain shortly what it is. And we can use iOS dependencies. But in common main, we can only use common Kotlin. Now, what is the difference between, uh, and you can only, uh, sorry, you can also, you, you have to write common Kotlin, which means that you can only use, or you can either only use like the standard lib for Kotlin, or you can use also multi-platform dependencies in the common main. But what's the difference between common Kotlin, Kotlin JVM, and Kotlin native? That's, it sounds a little confusing. Common Kotlin compiles to multiple platforms. So you can't depend on any platform specifics in Kotlin common Kotlin. If, and that includes Java. Um, you can't use um, just normal Java in, in your common Kotlin uh, code. So for example, if I wanted to use, say, java.util.random, any function from that class, if I wrote, wrote code right using that class in common main, it would actually not even compile. That's because um, that is more JVM. It's based on the JVM. So while if I if I were to run it on Android main or Android app, and I use, if I pasted that that java.util.random code in there, it would work. But in common Kotlin, I have to use something that's based on the standard lib or is already a multi-platform dependency. So if I use something like kotlin.random.random and use something from that, uh, that package or that class, then it will compile and run just fine. Kotlin JVM, on the other hand, is based on the JVM platform. And so you can use Java libraries there. Kotlin native is based on the iOS platform. And so you can use iOS code from Kotlin. One more thing that I wanna show you here is what code the Android app will include. So Android will include this. It will include the Android app module Android main and common main. Now that will be the entirety of your Android app. Whereas iOS will, will contain iOS app module and the shared module consisting of common main and iOS main. Now this is pretty interesting. What do you see in common Kate? It's right there in the middle. Common main, right? Common mm -hmm. main is where we have our common cotton stuff. We have our common business logic or an important algorithm that we want to share between those platforms. And that's the essence of Kotlin multi-platform mobile. We have this uh, code that we code in common main that is shared between the platforms and we can maximize the use of common code in there. So now it is actually time to uh, run our um, application. Can I and so it, uh, jump in quickly with a sh small short question, but it relates, uh, it really relates to everything you described. Uh, I see my bear, uh, I, I don't remember it was from just one of our users, but I uh, see a lot of questions regarding uh, does Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile produce C or Objective C code? Uh, the, the, the correct answer neither uh, it produces native binaries uh, using LVVM uh, compiler backend uh, and it uh, goes with Objective-C headers uh, so you can uh, call this code as spam safe from Objective-C or Swift so it's, it doesn't transpile into one of these language uh, uh, we use native binaries from iOS application that's that's why you don't have uh, any performance issues uh, or something like that when you use your shared module 
Are there any other questions, Kate? That you want to uh, I think okay. yeah, we can we can cover them in our plant. plant. Bit, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. yeah, we we prepared it. Okay, let's right. go. Let's go back to Android Studio, and I want to show you what happens when I run this application. So I've got this Run Configurations drop down, and I selected Android app, and then I press Play or Run, and it's going to build. Hopefully it won't take too long. And there it displays. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit for you. It says, hello, Android 33. Now, surprise, surprise, there's also an iOS app version here um, that you can click from the download and you can run it from here. So it takes a little bit longer to compile and run. But finally, it will switch over to the um, iOS uh, um, emulator and show us hello iOS 15.5. So that's the goal for section one was really just to um, display our hello Android and hello iOS versions. But I want to take it one step further here and do something interesting with um, with our shared code, which is just the greeting. Um, sorry, I've got a little lost here. So so we've run we've run everything. And um, I want to just take a few questions now. Uh, let me just quickly uh, find my slide. It's fine. Sure, let's, let, let's, go, let's go to, to the go. questions. Any questions so far? Um, I think we can answer this question right now uh, because mm -hmm. it's like about uh, this general question of uh, of how Kotlin works with iOS Path, the suite of Objective C. So, is uh, coroutine work? Let me show this question. Is coroutine work on iOS module? I can start answering, and Pam, please add uh, anything. And folks, you again at anything. Kevin, I see you on screen. <laughs> good to go. Good, good to see you here. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yes, uh, coroutines and suspend functions, you can use it in your shared Kotlin code and you uh, can use them from Swift. Out of the box, uh, uh, you can use them using completion handlers, using callbacks, but there are some community solutions that will allow you to also to work uh, with them with the async await concepts and uh, all that uh, modern iOS Swift stuff. And like uh, in general, you can use all the concepts from Kotlin in your shared module. You can use standard library features. You can use modern Kotlin language features. But some of them may convert like not one-to-one -to, -one to iOS part because currently we have uh, Kotlin um, to Objective-C interop and not to pure Swift. But uh, it's planned. Uh, it's planned and uh, we're all waiting for it, of course, uh, because as iOS developers, I know that you you expect to to use like the most modern API from shared model. Currently, you can uh, get this by um, producing some wrappers uh, and uh, not only manually. Again, there are some community solutions for it, uh, like uh, Key Swift from IceRock. Uh, again, uh, folks, share your experience. Uh, um, are you using these tools? Uh, are they helpful for you? Uh, yeah, but. Uh, like the general idea, just to think uh, which concepts are available right now in Objective-C and uh, uh, some wrappers may help you to, to make your API like, more modern. Perfect. Um, can I continue, Kate, or is there more questions? Uh, let me check. Um, oh, uh, that one regarding the tooling stuff and CocoaPods. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have to use CocoaPods or will Kotlin, Kotlin Multipod for mobile use the Swift package manager? Uh, again, I, I can, as an iOS developer, uh, I, I, I want to steal these questions from Pam. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so currently, like, yes, the official supported distribution options is the regular framework. Uh, uh, we are using it right now. Uh, it just uses uh, Xcode configuration and uh, it produces the needed artifact and uh, we just uh, 
tell the uh, Xcode where to find this artifact, like using this project configuration. But of course, it's not very useful when you don't want to develop your projects uh, like in Monorep and you have separate rep repositories and you need to set up, like your team is more bigger than one person maybe, mm -hmm. and your project is more complex than, uh, <laughs> than our creating project. So I totally understand the need of using uh, dependency manager. So currently, yes, you can use CocoaPods. Uh, and uh, uh, for Swift package manager, we don't have uh, official support yet. But again, our community like is awesome. Mm -hmm. And for I think the vast majority of uh, issues <laughs> you can struggle with, uh, we have uh, like uh, the solutions from the community. Uh, and again, for Swift package manager, you also can find one. Uh, we will share all the needed and useful links uh, later and again folks please share share your experience you can you can promote your libraries uh, or tools right now it's a good, good time for it very good time all right good i want to show you around the code so that you have a better understanding of how everything gets on the screen that i've just shown you so we're going to look in common main under, so we've got our shared module, and then we have our common main source set, and then we're going to look at this greeting file. Now, greeting contains a class that has a platform property that you and the value you get from this get, get platform function. It also has a function which is actually what our shared code is, and it's called greeting, and it returns just a simple hello platform dot name. Okay. But what is platform? Now, let's click into platform to see what's happening in that file. It's also in common main. Uh, I'm just highlighting it there for you so you can see where it is. OK, so platform is an interface that has a property called name. So that will be, for example, on Android, Android 33, or um, yeah, Android 33, or on iOS 15.5. Um, it also has this function called get platform that we saw a little bit earlier. And get platform returns a type uh, or a type of platform, but it has this interesting expect keyword in front of it. And there's also no implementation for for get platform. So where do you you know where where is where is the actual implementation for it? Well, if you go to this gutter icon over here and you click on it you'll see that there's two implementations. There's a getting started shared main and a shared iOS main. So if you look at, so this might be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to explain it now. So Android main is actually sort of got a pseudonym of main in this, in this module. And then we've obviously got iOS main also as a source set. So when I click on this one, the iOS main points to iOS main and main points to Android main. So let's start out by going to Android main. The Android main platform class, um, I, I don't know if you know this, but if you click on this, like... Uh, that, that's my favorite, like a, my favorite button. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you get lost and you have the file open, but you don't know where you are, you just click on it and it will open, it will open the project uh, structure so that you know where you are. And here we are in Android main under the, uh, in the platform file. So um, we are uh, looking at inside this file, we've got an Android platform class that implements the platform interface. So it has a name property as well, and it's overriding that name property from platform and giving it a value of Android followed by the SDK version uh, integer. So that would be 33. Um, so here we're actually accessing Android libraries. But also notice something else here in this file. We've got this get platform function that actually has an implementation. It's returning an instance of the class we just have we just created. And it also has an interesting keyword in front of it called actual. Now expect and actual kind of work together. So in common main, you'll have you'll say, I expect this function to be in the platform specific parts. And the, in the platform specific parts, so Android main and Iris main, you'll, you'll have your actuals that will say, actually, here I am. Um, you were expecting something and here I actually am. So um, 
in iris we'll also have a similar function but let's go to let's go back to our expect function and you can click on the gutter icon here and there we are again so if we want to now navigate to iris main here we go and we see that we are under iris main and in the platform file so we do a lot of similar things in this file as well it has a class iris platform that implements platform and it has a property called name that we are overriding from platform. But here it's doing something else. It's using um, a class called UI device and some other stuff as well. Where does this come from? Well, if you scroll just slightly here, it's looking at UI kit. UI kit is actually Iris stuff. So we're actually accessing Iris uh, libraries here or the, the, the APIs of iOS. So we're using uh, iOS classes, properties, and functions here to get the system name, which is iOS, and the system version, which is 15.5. We also have a similar uh, get platform function here that returns a type of platform, and it's actually the iOS platform that it's going to return. And it also has that actual keyword in front to say, hello, here I am. I correspond to actual for iOS. So I want to explain something just quickly about the expect actual mechanism. And that is that when we compile our targets, the Kotlin compiler is going to substitute this expect function with the actual implementation. So um, it's going to take this uh, expect function and it's going to substitute for Android. It's going to substitute this implementation so that um, so that Android will get Android platform implementation and iOS will get the iOS platform implementation. But something else that I also want to mention is that you can use the actual expect the expect actual mechanism for more than just um, functions. You can use it for classes, objects, functions as we see now, and even properties. You can use it for for all of those things. So. It's, it's really quite uh, flexible. But um, how does inf this information now actually get on the screen? So we've got, we've got our shared code, but how does it actually get on the screen? So for your Android developers, they're probably rolling their eyes and going, of course, it's on an activity. And the answer is really, that's absolutely correct. We're looking at some activity stuff now. So let me just close this a little bit. Oh. Okay, this is just previews and stuff. Don't, wish, don't worry about that. And I'm just gonna close this a little bit. Okay, so here we are in a class called main activity or a function uh, um, uh, file called main activity. Now this uses a framework called Jetpack Compose or a UI um, toolkit called Jetpack Compose. And the first part of our, um, of our file is basically just setting up the theme for Jetpack Compose. Um, and for the iOS developers out there, it's very similar to SwiftUI. It's also a declarative framework. Um, and we're going to be looking at the iOS version just now, and you'll see how similar it actually look. So in main activity, our class, we have a very important function that will show this, the, the activity. Now, activity is analogous to a screen. And on create is... Uh, analogous to showing uh, showing the setting up the contents of that screen. You, you can see that here in that very aptly named set content uh, function call that it's doing there. So first it sets up the theme and then it sets up the content of what that what you want to display in the theme. And here we have what is actually inside of uh, the uh, the content of the screen is a lot of greetings and I hope that with this, um, with this whole bunch of greetings, you, viewer, feel super, super welcome to our webinar because we've got a composable greeting here. We've got a greeting class here that we're creating instant from, and we have a function greeting called here. But seriously, folks, we're, we're going to fix this. This is a little bit confusing, so we're definitely aware of it. Don't stress. Okay, so let's click into the greeting composable. Now, composable is a... Just a, it's a way to display a UI element. And 
um, we see that um, we it's basically a Kotlin function that we add the composable annotation to. And inside is the actual implementation, whoops, of, that was scary, um, of the greeting composable. And it's just a text element that we pass, that we, we display some of the text that we pass into. So that will be on Android, our greeting.greeting. And that would be Android 3, uh, hello and Android 33. So it will just display that text element here. Now, how does it actually work on uh, iOS? Well, let's go to iOS app and we'll open iOS from here. We can open Xcode and there we are. Okay, so let's first look at iOS app. Now, this is a very simple Swift UI. I look, at, I'm even showing you, I'm importing Swift UI here. It, this is a simple Swift UI iOS app that has a body that has this view called content view inside of it. Let's quickly click over to content view and it uses greeting.greeting .greeting to create this constant and the body of this content view is just a piece of text, like a text UI element that has this greeting, um, greeting this greeting constant inside of it. So that will also read greet, um, hello iOS 15.5. So they look very much the same and it's very much the same idea, this idea of declarative UIs. Um, but I want to do something a little bit more exciting. So let's go back to Android Studio and let's go back to the greeting class. Sam, may I, before interrupt you with a question, uh, I saw a lot of confusion, uh, not only uh, during our webinar, but uh, like during the whole existence of Kotlin Mata platform regarding mm -hmm. like this battle, expect uh, actual versus, mm -hmm. uh, let me share this, uh, versus uh, like interfaces approach. So uh, one of uh, these questions, uh, uh, from Karen, uh, why Kotlin team implemented expect actual? Uh, there we can create interface in common co common module, uh, then uh, and then has the implements in each uh, platform in platform specific code. I'm not sure I understand the question very clearly. Um, uh, Kate, do you perhaps know what they mean? Uh, yes, yes. Like usually, uh, you can achieve. Uh, like this simple behavior, which we are doing right now with just creating like uh, interfaces in your common module and uh, making implementations uh, like uh, uh, for these uh, uh, interfaces in shared in, 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 in platform specific code. And uh, like uh, uh, we in, in a team, we were struggled to give like the, 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 the detailed answer, but uh, uh, like there is one idea, and then you need to decide between two these uh, two these approaches. If interfaces are enough for you, use them. Here on this webinar, we wanted to show you like the whole concept because expect actual it's like more powerful mechanism. And by the way, some experienced folks uh, has already uh, share. Uh, their opinion on the bus, for example, Anton White's, uh, but expect actual for classes has some benefits. You can sub subclass expect actual differently on iOS than Android. And like um, um, in general, expect actual gives you more, more power. Uh, mm -hmm. It's out of scope for our today webinar, but uh, just be aware of, uh, of the existence of these two concepts and uh, uh, like, you know, we have a backlog of questions uh, which we are going to cover um, in, uh, in our FAQ <laughs> and this question, uh, which, uh, which approach uh, is better to use is like <laughs> the first uh, of the backlog. But uh, mm -hmm. today we wanted to show you, to show you the, all, all the concepts uh, uh, of Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile and expect actually is quite new because like this concept of interfaces we have in, in the majority of languages, but this expect actual feature is quite unique for Kotlin. Yes, yes. Okay, so is there any more questions that you think we should answer right now or are we okay? Uh, we're okay, let's wait for, for our break, break, for our okay. day break. So here I am back in Android Studio and I'm in com the shared module, common main, and looking at the greeting class. 
Now I want to do something. You, I want to use a function that is in this Kotlin standard lib called reversed. Okay, so it's just going to reverse the platform name. So let's run it on Android and see what happens. Okay, it's zoomed in, but it says, hello, 33, your DNA. Okay, so it's reversed that's that, that platform name for us. And because the standard lib is common Kotlin, we can do this in common main, remember? Okay, let's run IS app and see what happens there. And there wait, we wait, did you, know, did you know that you just mentioned, sorry, you just mentioned you can prepare for pronunciation of this uh, reverse area. So you mentioned standard library. That's important thing that you can uh, mm -hmm. like use all its power uh, in shared yeah. model. And I just uh, uh, remembered that uh, uh, according to our last Kotlin developer survey, I think 90% or even um, uh, or, or even the higher number of users were absolutely satisfied with the amount of features in Kotlin standard mm -hmm. library. So, so it's quite an important an important uh, feature for, yeah. for, for Kotlin. Something Mac. else that I want to I want to maybe just give uh, Sebastian Argner a little plug on his on the Kotlin channel. He ha he often has then like a standard lib Safari where he talks, you, he talks you through certain sections of the standard lib, and it's really helpful for learning the standard lib and um, understanding its full power. So definitely go check out uh, standard lib Safari. Okay. So on our, on our uh, iPhone 11 emulator, we see that it it's writes, hello, 5.5, 5.51, 5 soy. Okay, so it's reversed the string as well. Nice. Okay, so what we, what can we conclude from this? It's basically that the shared code was automatically updated and reflects on redeployment on Android and iOS. So we can write the code once, and when we redeploy, it will compile into something, and it will show immediately on on the uh, different application platforms, which is pretty cool. Now, I wonder if there's any more questions that we want to answer now? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Um, some of them, they are like more general, but I want to mm -hmm. cover them as well, uh, because maybe if some folks want to uh, to leave a webinar, but I would suggest you not to do this because uh, like in our last uh, break unit session, we will answer the, the rest of the questions. But anyway, so uh, just to Pam, just to give you a small break of uh, reversing the strings. Uh, so uh, Ryan's asking, is asking, uh, can I migrate my app from Android to iOS with this? This I mean, got multi-platform mobile. Uh, let me use this uh, this opportunity <laughs> and promote our next webinar, uh, which is called uh, uh, "Making Your Android Application Work on iOS." So, like the the general answer is yes, but of course you can do it like with like one one click, and especially in terms of user interface, as we discussed with Cotton Multi Platform Mobile, allows you to share pieces uh, of your logic. But you definitely can migrate your logic. First, we have if you are like curious and can't wait for the next webinar, uh, you can uh, visit our tutorial uh, on Kotlin Docs. I will share the link right now. Uh, it uh, it covers the basics of this idea of how you how you can migrate. Uh, how the 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 biggest question is what to do with your GVM dependencies because. Uh, to make your code uh, being able to use on both platforms, uh, you need to use a pure Kotlin. So uh, the, the, the biggest uh, question is uh, how you can handle your GVM dependencies. You can find some alternatives, uh, like you can even convert a code. So there are different approaches, but, but it's possible. And I believe Kevin Russell they will be presenting next week uh, will give us uh, more detailed uh, answers um, and uh, as we started to speak about uh, our 
plans on webinars. Uh, here's the next question. Using Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile, can uh, SQLite, Core Data, and Room database be shared across the, the platforms? Uh, I believe Pam will cover a little bit about uh, dependencies and multi-platform like, uh, in, the, in, the, in the next section, exactly in the next session. Uh, so this is kind of a spoiler, but uh, uh, the, the answer is uh, yes, it depends uh, on if uh, the library uh, has multi-platform support. And for example, mm -hmm. uh, for, for Realm library, which is also quite popular option for, for managing, uh, for storing data on mobile devices and not only mobile devices, uh, they, not recently, we, they added multi-platform support a year ago, if I'm not mistaken, and they're constantly improving their library. And they also will present you how to share the data layer. We've got multi-platform mobile, somewhere in November, I forgot the date, but ch please check the schedule and register for mm -hmm. a webinar. Uh, and uh, let's come back, let um, give me just a second to check um, if we have some questions uh, related to what um, you have described. Okay, they're mostly general. And uh, so let's go next because the next topic is, uh, <laughs> is quite interesting. We all have simple applications, but uh, let's be honest, we, we need to add some dependencies. Exactly. So let's do that. Let's add some dependencies. So in this section, we're going to be adding a third party library dependency and then use it in our shared code. So we want to make our application just a little bit more festive. So we're going to be adding um, the days until uh, some text to, to display the days until the new year. Um, for this, we're going to use a multi-platform library called uh, Kotlin Next Date Time, and it's from JetBrains, to calculate the number of days um, left un until to, uh, January 1st. So I'm going to show you now in Android Studio how I can go ahead and do that. I'm just going to close this little emulator so we have more space. And then we're going to go into the common main, um, uh, the, the, the common main or the shared modules, um, build.grade or the KTS. Now, now the KTS uh, extension is for Kotlin script. So I just want to quickly show, um, copy the dependency code that I already prepared for here. It's nothing magical. Um, I will explain to you exactly what it does. So we're just setting some dependencies um, on common main. And the implementation of that dependency is, um, is this is sort of like the package name. That's the library name. And then this is the version name. And then we press sync. And that will go and draw down from wherever repositories we're drawing down from. It's going to draw down that dependency. And it's already finished. So next, we need to create this file in common main called new year. So it's going to be shared code. And we create it like this. We create a file called new year. That. I don't want to add it to, to it just yet. So I'm just going to show you what code we've got here. OK, let me explain it to you. We've got, we're importing our library the next day time and then we're declaring a top level function in Kotlin called days until new year. We're using some calculations um, that is part of Kotlin next day time to get today's date and it's based on the system clock and this time the current system time zone. So that's what we use to calculate today. Then we use another concept from Kotlin next day time local date to determine next year's date. And then we just use our days until function um, to calculate the days between today and next year, January 1st. But of course, we need to use this, uh, this code somewhere. So I want to just copy this code here and make our greeting function a little bit more festive. So we've got here a little bit of code that says there are only days until New Year days left until the new year with a nice firecracker 
um, or a, a nice fireworks emoji. Now, maybe you're wondering, what is this, if you're an iOS developer, what is this little dollar and curly braces? It's just, it's, it's basically called string interpolation. And it's a way to, instead of concatenating strings together with the plus sign and making, making sure everything is escaped nicely and so on. It's just a really quick way to get um, cool functions or cool properties and, and things like that and embedded into our strings. So um, let's go ahead and actually run this. So I'm first going to run it on Android. And it will show here. So let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see. And so this is the string we had before, and there are only 73 days left until New Year. And that depresses me because I still haven't read all the books that I um, needed to read for this year. I was hoping for eight, but I've only read three, and there, two of them were KMM books. So, mm, oops, let's run iOS app next. Okay. Okay, so there we go. This shows exactly the same. There are only 73 days left until New Year with our little sparkly emoji. And that reminds me that I have to start getting ready my New Year's resolutions for 2023. I don't know about you, Kate, but I, I think I'm going to be a little bit less adventurous when it comes to the book department this year. So what did we actually just do? We we used a dependency. We used a multi-platform dependency in common main and we could deploy and run it on um, different platforms, but because it's multi-platform, we didn't have to add, use the expect actual mechanism. We didn't have to do anything strange or funny. We could use it directly from the common main. Um, so it, it was almost as if it was common Kotlin. And yeah, let's see if we um, see what's next. So does anybody have any questions so far on section, on our third section? Um, they mostly relate not to fraud section with the dependencies because we also covered some uh, some libraries uh, questions before. But uh, I, I want to again use this break and uh, cover like all the other questions uh, because we have a lot of them. So uh, a lot of Android apps uh, follow MVVM with uh, um, follow follow MVVM. Sorry, I'll show. I, I always uh, forget to show the question. So a lot of Android mm -hmm. apps follow um, MVVM architecture pattern. And with KMM, do you recommend the same? Pam, what would you recommend? So um, in, with SwiftUI, it also seems that MVVM is is followed um, quite often. But the benefit of using Kotlin multi-platform mobile is that you can choose your architecture and that can be different on different platforms. So if you want to use MVVM on Android and maybe something else on iOS, you can. But um, it's definitely, it, it, it does make sense in your mind to kind of um, use the same architecture on both if you can. But something that I wanted to, to mention is that you can also share your presenter layer so that includes view models. And it's actually quite an exciting part of, of the technology is that you can share presenters, view models, and controllers, that presenter layer of your application. Yeah, I totally agree. And you can you might use uh, uh, MVP pattern. And in that case, you also can use can reuse the presenter. We all know that this, uh, this is endless battle, but uh, mostly it's about <laughs> the same. We can... Uh, have some fun and run a short battle and like type uh, your architecture favorite. name and chat <laughs> and do, yeah, the, 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 let's uh, check the, the number of it and which one will win. But uh, of course, uh, like uh, the good thing, I totally agree that you can reuse. But you, Pam, you gave a great, uh, great advice that uh, it's better to, uh, to stick with quite the same concepts because then you decide to go <laughs> go uh, go far uh, and share more uh, then it uh, it would be much easier for you to to like to move this uh, this presenter layer uh, to shared model if your if your concepts are quite the same so just to avoid uh, 
uh, huge refactoring in the future because like we see that uh, based on the experience of our users, they usually start with some small piece of logic, like one calculation or something. And later they, they, they decide to share more and more and more. And, uh, mm-hmm. and the, they, <laughs> the end is the question, then, uh, then Compose Multiplatform will support iOS. But we will answer this question in the end of the session, I, I found, I just found the way <laughs> to, to mm-hmm. keep the attention of our users, like <laughs> a life hack. Okay, so uh, let me check uh, the, the new questions. Um, okay, uh, it, it relates, is there a way to share the view model class? Yes, like just share it. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. So there are a lot of, um, uh, what I wanted to mention that uh, we have, uh, um, I, I wanted to say great documentation page because uh, <laughs> I came with the idea of creating it. It contains the table uh, of samples, of sample projects. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they are arranged by, by different criteria. And one of the criteria is uh, which, which architecture is used in this sample. Other criteria, mm-hmm. by the way, which libraries um, are they using, and or what or which distribution option uh, is being used, like CocoaPods, Regal Framework, or even Swift Package Manager. So uh, mm, I find this page quite useful, uh, um, exactly because uh, you can f- you can not just uh, searching for a million of samples, but if you want to see how to share the view model, you can go just uh, click command F, type MVVM, and check the samples with uh, exact this architecture. I will share the link uh, right now. Okay, let's go next, and I will collect more questions. So actually, the the next is the next steps. So. We've got uh, next steps for you, some homework to do. So you can follow um, the onboarding documentation here um, and work through section one to four. So section four, as I mentioned before, is the data and networking sharing layer that we're adding to to our application. And it's actually quite involved. It's it's, um, a lot of concepts to understand, but I think once you've gone through it and you're like, um, I think it will be like a really amazing feeling and you'll have a very good understanding of what, how, how to actually write a good, solid KMM or Kotlin multi-platform mobile uh, application. Um, something that Kate mentioned was the KMM samples. Go have a look at all the samples that's available and find one that um, that that looks, uh, looks exciting to you. Um, they're all recommended. They all use good, good, programming practices for Kotlin multi-platform mobile. They were specifically curated by Kate. So um, please have a look at them. And um, that is your homework for next time. And please join our other webinars. Our next webinar will be on October the 25th with the folks from TouchLab. And it will be making your Android app work on iOS. But I want to just quickly go back to this slide and ask if there are any more questions before we say bye-bye. Sure. Uh, let me let me facilitate all these questions. But before that, uh, I wanted to share with you uh, some message from Slack. I wanted to be honest. I want to give them a short break and please uh, let's uh, let's say thanks uh, uh, for her. As I think, like it's 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 really hard to present uh, live uh, to share uh, to cover all the details and all the questions and uh, joking simultaneously. So uh, mm-hmm. I always like. Uh, I think that uh, all, all the speakers who do live coding, they're just awesome as our community, who which help us a lot answering the questions. So please, uh, uh, yes, applause uh, uh, for Pam. And uh, Pam, please take a, take, a, uh, take a breath while I'm reading this message. So I was, <laughs> I was searching for some answer in our Kotlin public Slack. Uh, and <laughs> I read this. I was, uh, I, was uh, I think it's... Uh, so, uh, one of our um, community members uh, share uh, sh- is sharing uh, his experience. So, I don't know if it's related, but since I moved from the complicated uh, Gradle task to just using the CocoaPods, we got a lot of CocoaPods uh, questions today, so that's why I wanted to share it. 
So uh, I moved uh, since I moved from the complicated Gradle task to just using the CocoaPods integration, I had to make a Swift main that launches my Kotlin main. My 100% pure Kotlin iOS app now has a one single line of Swift, and I hate it. Still 99 <laughs> and 1999 were Kotlin though. Uh, <laughs> using this, this, uh, this message, uh, this post, I wanted to cover a bunch of questions regarding how can I share this or that or that or that. Yeah, so uh, it's all possible, but something, uh, something uh, works out of the box, for example, like suspend functions. And something doesn't work uh, out of the go out of the box. For example, uh, all flow concepts because uh, flow it's a library, not not a language concept, and that's why we don't have the support like in language interop. While interop uh, is about language features, but uh, there are a lot of like approaches and tools uh, how to achieve it and how to use all these concepts. Uh, uh, and so uh, samples are very helpful to to see uh, how how it might look uh, like. Mm -hmm. And and again, our community, I saw a lot of good advices in chat. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, let's go to to the questions. Give me a second. I I was uh, so <laughs> so focused on reading this joke, so I <laughs> I got lost. <laughs> with it. But I think I think it it worth it. It worth it. Okay. It's definitely a cool joke. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, I promise to answer this question uh, regarding Compose multi-platform uh, and uh, iOS support, but uh, I want to answer using the question. Oh my God. Uh, so, um, did uh, anyone, I hope yes, but uh, again, I need to ask uh, Fox, uh, uh, did anyone of you watch our Kim better uh, video? Uh, came on pre premiere video like our so our our announcement video um, good to know you you haven't read my articles but uh, thanks god you watched the video <laughs> it's <laughs> like part of the homework uh the the reason i'm asking that uh, somewhere in the end uh, we give a short uh, spoiler regard regarding this question and uh, uh, if you pay attention to it, you might see that uh, uh, there is a screenshot with uh, uh, two applications, iOS and Android, uh, and their interfaces looks uh, pretty the same, but uh, it's different. And uh, yes, they both uh, written uh, in using Compose for iOS. And uh, like, it's not only the screenshot. Uh, I think uh, many of you all saw so this news uh, uh, about DroidCon application, uh, which was written by TouchLab, and you can even download it from App Store and uh, Google Play and play with it. Uh, but what about like the official support? Uh, the only thing I can answer right, right now that uh, the technical preview is in progress, and uh, that's the reason uh, we wanted to show you the screenshot uh, of these applications. So um, some... Um, some of you might ask, well, previously you say that uh, Kotlin multi-platform model, it's not about interface. It's about uh, like logic, 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 and you need to write interfaces uh, separately and uh, have uh, platform, platform specific interfaces. But uh, I love this idea that uh, not only Kotlin multi-platform model, but also Kotlin, it's not about like building the borders, but it's about the choice. And uh, mm -hmm. again, it's about this. I, I saw, of course, this question, like, what would you recommend Kotlin Mata Platform Mobile or Flutter? Uh, as a product marketing manager, uh, I need to say, mm -hmm. of course, it's Kotlin Mata Platform Mobile, get started, here are the links. But as a, as an, as a developer, uh, I think, like, each task uh, need, needs each uh, needs. Uh, uh, a specific tool for it. There is mm -hmm. no universal tool uh, yet, and I think <laughs> it's it's not uh, it's not possible to have uh, one universal language or one universal, universal cross-platform framework. So with Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile, it's the same. Uh, and of course, when realize that some teams they need uh, the 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 possibility to to share the interfaces as well. Mm -hmm. It uh, works well for. 
for testing some product uh, assumptions uh, for building uh, MVP projects and not only mm -hmm. for some simple applications uh, when you use, for example, uh, only uh, some internal applications for some big companies. You don't need a fancy uh, UI with beautiful animation, well, only if you have time. So yes, we, we all wait for it. So stay tuned. It was a long answer, but uh, but it, it it's 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 important one. Of course, it's yeah. important one, and we can't just keep silence uh, when we receive uh, such questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, Pam, uh, now uh, as you are not uh, busy with uh, with uh, reversing the strings, uh, you, can, <laughs> you can also ch check uh, uh, our chat and answer some sure. questions uh, which you want to. Okay. Um, I need to share. Mm. Oh, thank you, Oliver. Thanks. That's lovely. Thank you. Okay. Oh, ah. good one. <laughs> oh, yes, I was just looking at that one. <laughs> uh, go, go, go for it. Thank you. Uh, so, Russell, who is going to be uh, presenting our next webinar is asking about some cool multi-platform libraries for people to check out as they get started. So I would definitely go check out for for your data, your database management stuff, your data management stuff. I would check out SQL Delight or Realm. I would check out things like um, Coin for dependency injection. I would check out Ktor for networking, and apparently Arrow um, Kate is also. Um, multi-platform so you can definitely go check that out my arrow is for those folks that really really love their functional programming uh, yes and 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 uh, I want to add something here uh, if you are just getting started and you even haven't decided which pieces of logic do you want to use or like how to do this you can check uh, the touch lab project camp kit uh, like mm -hmm. it's a set of uh, code tools and uh, like all everything you need uh, when you want to get started so watch this webinar uh, check out our documentation and uh, download camp kit, uh, camp kit and play with it and basically i think it should cover uh, your first <laughs> your first need uh, and your first uh, questions Okay, Pam, uh, did you um, find anything else you wanted to answer? Um, but I don't totally understand if you feel exhausted and don't want to. And uh, again, sorry, folks, if we um, haven't covered uh, your question. Uh, uh, there were uh, a lot of them. And uh, on one hand, I'm happy <laughs> about it. But on the other, um, uh, I feel a little bit frustrated that we like, can't uh, uh, go one by one. But we will... Um, create some artifact like blog post or something like this so we will decide later uh, which will contain like the most popular questions and again we will repeat all the answer and uh, give all the needed things to you so please stay tuned uh, and subscribe to our cotton blog and i think you mm -hmm. will receive it if you registered for the webinar because like not only the reminders but also <laughs> like follow up follow up emails they are included yeah, I also just want to give a, a big shout out to the folks from Touch Lab, Kevin and Russell, who are answering a lot of questions, all the other folks that are also pitching in and helping answer questions. Um, thank you so much. You're you're absolutely, absolutely amazing. Thank you for helping us answer all these. When I last checked, <laughs> there were more than 300 questions and I was like, ah, <laughs> but thank you very much. Uh, I don't let's really go see anything through, through a couple of last more, and I think we can we can finish for okay. now. Just uh, will Hilt uh, be used uh, uh, in common main code? I think like is it mm. is it tab, uh, is it is it available for using in shared module? So Hilt for for IS folks is basically it's a. It's a dependency. I sometimes I I don't want, I'm too afraid to use the phrase dependency injection. But <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> someone can come to you and say it's not a dependency injection. <laughs> yeah, but you you can use um, you can't use Hilt because it's very Androidy. 
but you can use something called coin. Now, I want to follow up with this uh, question over here. Um, why can't I show it? Oh, um, it's, it's basically asking, is coin the only option for shared dependency injection? And the answer is no. There's actually also codeine. There's Kotlin inject, and there's there's a whole host, and you can also do manual dependency injection yourself if you really, really, really wanted to. Um, but so Coin isn't the only option, and please note that uh, Coin and Codeine both are follow the service locator pattern. Um, so I, I tend to prefer saying like something like it's. Uh, it's dependency management, but I've gotten some criticism that even that is the wrong term. So I just, I don't want to even go in the direction of dependency injection. <laughs> but coin, uh, it's not the only option. You can definitely use codeine um, or uh, Kotlin inject um, there. Um, somebody was also asking for the um, Slack, the Kotlin Lang uh, invitation. Um, we will add, we will be, if you registered for this webinar, with your email, um, we will be uh, sending out a, a little follow-up email and we'll include the link and how you can actually sign up for Kotlin Lang Slack, uh, the Slack workspace. It's really very, um, very uh, useful to, especially the multi-platform um, channel to ask questions. And uh, there's a lot of people from JetBrains and of course from Ch Touch Lab. Um, that are there to answer questions and the community also helps you answer your questions. So it's a really great place to be. Yeah, and if you can't wait for this follow-up uh, email, <laughs> you can go uh, to our landing page and uh, somewhere it, uh, in the end, uh, it contains it the link, helpful. yeah, the link to, to, mm -hmm. to Slack and to other resources uh, as well. Okay. I think uh, it's uh, enough for today. It was quite an intensive uh, session and uh, that, uh, that was uh, that's all uh, because of you, Pam and folks. Uh, so again, thanks for mm. all your activity, all your questions. Uh, I'm happy to see a lot of questions uh, about uh, dependency ejection, by the way, because again, stop me, uh, but uh, I want to remind <laughs> you about our next webinar sessions and uh, dependency injection and different mm -hmm. ways uh, to implement it, uh, we are going to cover on the third webinar. So please register, please stay tuned and uh, like have a nice day and evening. Uh, it was great uh, and see you, see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>